Welcome, children. All are welcome. All are welcome. Welcome to dinner party tonight. We are shooting a few days before Memorial Day. Please remember that Memorial Day is not just a barbecue. I know you guys know this but it is Memorial Day for a reason. We're having some construction, as you may or may not be able to see. My entire house is covered in protection. Uh, the guts of my house, his name is Henry. Uh, Henry's guts are 21 years old. And to say that technology and uh, environmental uh, protection has advanced in 20 years would be to say nothing at all, as my mother would say. Um, so his guts need to be fixed. My house is beautiful but he, the guts don't work. So we're gonna fix Henry and make him really, really fierce. So today we're going to be making curry, not in a hurry. But what is curry in a hurry? What is that, curry in a hurry? It's a porno. It's a porno, like Shaving Private Ryan. We're gonna be making a beautiful curry, which is essentially Indian, Northern Indian style, cocovana essentially, right? Uh, showing you that there's similarities in cooking technique globally. It's interesting. A lovely homemade mango chutney. Ooh, it's so pungent and delicious and lovely. We're going to be serving that with iceberg wedge. I mean, how fabulous is that? Uh, you just, from when you were a kid, you used to get the iceberg wedge with the blue cheese dressing. It's great. David and I have been doing it in Quag. It's very simple. You cut iceberg into the thing and put dressing on it. But we're going to be making our own French dressing, which is going to make you laugh when you hear how you make it because it's pretty funny. And, uh, and then we're going to have a beautiful light summery dessert of icebox sugar cookies, which we will explain and show, that are very light and yummy, served with lemon buttermilk sorbet that Reggie likes, even though she doesn't like buttermilk. Right, Reg? Right. But it's very light and yummy. So it's a beautiful summer evening supper. Guys, I want to give you an update on my dog. The last time we shot this, I thought we were at the end of the whole thing. There was another basically four weeks and it's still going on. Dr. Sapienza, Donna and Dana and everybody at Long Island Veterinary Specialists have been amazing with Leonard's ongoing eye ulcer issue, but he's not in pain, he's fine. They're just taking forever to heal and he keeps on sort of re-injuring them and it's kind of a drag. He seems perturbed, right? This thing has been a freaking nightmare. If you have any questions about your dog's eye ulcers, you can ask me because I know a lot about eye ulcers. Right, Leonard? We're gonna make lemon buttermilk sorbet. This is really easy. I found this recipe because I bought too much buttermilk. And I was like, things to make with buttermilk. The squeaking and grinding sound you can vaguely hear is my ice cream machine that we're uh, basically cooling down to make ice cream. The first thing you're gonna do is zest four lemons. A microplane is the best zester, don't bother with anything else. Uh, buy organic lemons or scrub the hell out of them with a scrubber. You should also scrub organic lemons because they too are covered in wax. Did you guys hear about the landmark case against Roundup? Roundup is a, uh, a weed killer made by Bear, which is incredibly toxic. And you'll never hear me say I'm not one of these people. Roundup is toxic. It causes cancer and it causes birth defects and it should be taken off the market like it is everywhere else on the globe. A family won a multi-billion dollar settlement from Bear for cancer in their family caused by Roundup. It's the beginning of the end of that kind of product. Keep these lemons, obviously. You're, gonna, you're also going to use the, um, the juice. What is the difference between ice cream, sorbet, and sherbet? Ice cream has cream in it. Sorbet does not. Sherbet is a sorbet with a little bit of cream. Sherbet was one of my favorite foods. So is this a sherbet then? This is a sherbet because it's buttermilk sorbet, which is a light fruit-based ice cream confection with a little, actually a lot of dairy. But buttermilk is um, cultured milk. It's a little different and actually People who with lactose intolerance can actually sometimes drink that because it, it's, uh, 
It's fermented. Uh, this is the best juicer. Don't bother with anything else. The reamer is pointless. Unless you work in a bar. He's, he's sunbathing himself. And what's, what's all this? There's some anniversary with Ted Bundy or something? Why is there all these Ted Bundy things on suddenly? That movie with Zac Efron sucks. They got into trouble because he's good looking and they said that it was glorifying him or something. Well, that's ridiculous. Ted Bundy was really handsome. That's one of the reasons why he was so successful. We have about four lemons of zest. It's more than they say. I'm, I don't want to put a whole boatload in here. So there we go. I'm trying to clean the side with the juice. Two cups of sugar. Is that two cups? Yep. Seems like more. This is very easy. If you're a beginning ice cream maker, this is a good, good one. Ice cream, for some reason, especially if you're using a custard base, which we're not, it's just better if it sits overnight in the fridge. I don't know why. And the same thing goes for this sorbet. Um, so make this the night before when you come back from work. And then basically you stir this until the sugar dissolves. It seems like it's not gonna happen, but it happens quite quickly. I don't hear any sugar and looking at it and it's dissolved. I'm gonna pour this in here, it's gonna make a mess, so I'm gonna do it in the sink. I always forget that this recipe makes slightly more than the ice cream machine can hold. This Weck jar is exactly an ice cream maker amount. This is, I'm making a huge mess for no reason. Okay, wipe the outside. It's already cool, unlike a regular ice cream base, which you have to let come to room temperature. So I'm just gonna do this. And put it in the fridge. Where, through the magic of television, I have one that's already chilled. Now we're gonna churn this. Um, in kitchen equipment, which you can look up on our YouTube page, I recommended this particular ice cream maker, which I'm now going to unmuffle. This is the Cuisinart, the good one. Always remember to chill it before you use it. So I'm gonna pause it. The bowl has ice on it, which is good. I'm just gonna stir this, even though it looks fine in terms of distribution of lemon bits. And I'm going to pour it into my ice cream machine, just like that. And then Lindsay, just like that. It's at 38 from the cool down. I'm gonna leave it at 38 and we'll see what happens. Have a good time, ice cream. Don't get too cold. Some custard ice cream will churn in 25 minutes. This takes long, you know, it's, it depends. So just keep an eye on it. And then it has to be in the refrigerator to set for at least a couple hours um, before you should serve it, especially custard ice cream, which we're not making, must set in the fridge. This is a little different, but it should still be in the fridge a couple hours before you want to use it. Decanting ice cream from an ice cream maker is one of the most crucial moments of making your ice cream. Getting it off of this and into the container and into the freezer is very, very critical. The longer it melts, the more crystals you're gonna get. So you wanna chill, freeze your container and make sure this is really cold, all right? So here we go. Excuse me, Leonard. I'm talking about it's got to be fast, like this. It's very soft. Don't worry about that. It'll, it'll firm up in the fridge. Sometimes you, I have two people doing this with me. Critical. Okay, now make it look nice. I made stracciatelle ice cream for the Cherry Blossom Festival. That was some good ice cream. Right, Reg? The ice cream should set up in the fridge. Uh, you know, it depends on the ice cream. Some ice cream sets up faster. You don't want to serve soft serve. At least two hours. I usually churn in the morning of a dinner party. It's usually my first thing on my worksheet. Churn, exclamation point, that I've written in pencil. Like my fabulous 
great British Bake Off pencils that Toby gave me. And they say things like Soggy Bottom and Star Baker and Hollywood Handshake and Flavor's Gorgeous. Thanks, Toby! Let's make icebox cookies. The icebox cookies rock. And the reason they rock is because you can make the dough, frankly, weeks in advance. You can freeze it or you can leave it in your fridge. Most recipes say three days, but the truth is you can leave it over a week in the fridge. It's, it's nothing's gonna happen to it. And then you simply slice off the amount of cookies that you would like. A while ago, we did chocolate icebox cookies, but now we're gonna do uh, sugar cookies, which are everybody loves, that happen to be my favorite cookie. Besides Mexican wedding cookies, I love those. So we're gonna make vanilla icebox cookies. You're going to need two cups of flour, a teaspoon of baking powder, an egg from a chicken, uh, 10 uh, tablespoons of butter, which is inconveniently in between two and one and a half sticks, a cup of sugar, some vanilla, a mixer, a spatula, and a lot of heart. Last night, when I was prepping for the show, I had forgotten to make the, the cookies. I wrote Lynn and I said, oh, I made some, some prep stuff. And then she goes, sugar cookies? And I was like, oh, damn. And then I made them quickly and I had forgotten again to bring the butter. I didn't have butter out because I forgot to make the cookies. So here's what you do. Don't put it in the microwave. That's cooking it, okay? Put it down your trousers. Put it in your back pocket and sit on it while you watch you know, the dateline from Friday, which was actually a pretty good dateline. Or you put it in your front pocket or in your brassiere or put it next to your body. Within 20 minutes, it's basically room temperature at a nice pace, you know. Then if you put it in the mixer, when it's still a little bit above room temperature, the mixer will sort of bring it to um, a mixable state. My advice to you is always have a thing of butter out because you never know when it's gonna strike you to make something and you don't wanna put it down your trousers, especially if the boy or girl is there. So first of all, we are going to start with 10 tablespoons of butter from a cow. And you know, dairy cows have a rough life. So a lot of people don't think about that, but they, they do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Boop, butter. I'm gonna let this go a little bit. Oh, it wasn't attached. I'm gonna make it go a little higher. Gonna take you higher. The Bee Gees, man. Here's a question for you. Did Barry Gibb write a bad song? Name one bad song that the Bee Gees wrote. That guy is a frickin' genius. And it's so sad that he's alone now, that they're all gone. My dad used to be friends with Robert Stigwood, who was their producer. I'll tell you a story about that another day. That was a pretty funny story, but I'll tell you later. I'm gonna put the sugar in and we're gonna briefly talk again about combining. I guarantee you that combining is twice as long as you think it is, okay? You want it to change color and be light and for some of the but uh, sugar to be in incorporated, okay? So I'm just gonna dump this in. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. Let me tell you, it's gonna be a landmark case, that Sackler uh, pharmaceutical case for OxyContin. Wow, what a scourge. I mean, I have to say, they didn't, they lied about whether it was addictive, but if you're a doctor prescribing an opiate, don't you, isn't it sort of implied that it's addictive? Even if, um, even if they lied about how addictive it was, I think the doctors are in there somewhere too. I think we all have somebody cl close to us who's been touched by that. I certainly do. It's called real-time cooking. <laughs> See how it's getting lighter in color, I mean? Okay, so that's, this is incorporated. I'm gonna add an egg. I'm gonna pick a larger egg. Now, you're, you're telling me that you can't do this. Incorporate. Now remember, until you put flour in, you can beat the living shit out of it. Sorry. You can mix the living hell out of it. And the lighter and more incorporated it is, the better. When you put the flour in is when you can't beat the hell out of it because you will um, break the, you'll mess up the gluten strand. 
and you'll have a disaster, which is a fully cooked cake that's gummy. That's the mistake, okay, if that ever happens to you. So I'm gonna scrape down the sides. Oh, we forgot to preheat the oven. When I made these last night, I think Lynn was concerned because I was drinking wine at the theater. But I did it, Lynn. Yay. Lynn is in the new play. Brilliant, brilliant performance. It's a revival of a play we've done before, which is kind of interesting for all of us, I think. Right, Lenny? Yeah, very. It's very weird. This is a, our favorite vanilla paste. I don't know how much. I think the recipe is on chow hound or something. Just put vanilla in it. It's vanilla cookies. I'm going to put a boatload of salt in here. It's a teaspoon of baking powder. And you don't have to go through this whole sifting thing. Use a fork or just do this. I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna scrape down the sides. So this you can do while you're watching TV. This takes really no skill. If you guys watch RuPaul, you should watch RuPaul. Michelle Visage, that's all I have to say. Hair, nails, makeup, whatever. She can do no wrong. And now we're gonna add the flour. You can do it all at once if you want. I would do it like this. You don't wanna overbeat this. Now there's gluten involved. Oh my God, gluten, ah! All right, I'm making a dough, which is, looks good to me. Here comes the fun part. This is just gonna be a mess. Sorry, Ashton. Ashton is our PA. He's awesome, Ashton. Now you're gonna do this. My hands are clean, obviously. So take a handful of dough, and you're gonna roughly shape it into a, a tube. Then you're gonna set it down. You're gonna take this and you're gonna fold it over, but don't tuck it, said the actress to the bishop. <laughs> then what you're gonna do basically is make this into a, a log. Now remember, in the fridge, it's going to firm up drastically. So you're, you're making a log. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Boom, tubular. Uh, you're gonna put these misshapen logs, which we will then fix, into the fridge. I'm gonna prop them up like this. And prop them up next to something cold, like a can or something, you know what I mean? Like some other cold thing to hold it up. But through the magic of television, I happen to have one right here that's pretty firm. The problem with these, as they come to, when you're cutting it, as they come to room temperature, one side is gonna flatten. So when you cut it, turn the roll as you cut. One. I'm cutting these in a very haphazard way. Slightly thick, because we're gonna serve them with ice cream, you know? So you see how one, one side is flattening? So you wanna keep turning it. These go in a 350 oven until they look nice, you know? What you wanna try to do, which I didn't do, is make them all the same size so they cook at the same time. They're gonna puff up a little bit and brown. Basically pick one up and look at the bottom and if it's brown, they're done. Ow. Goodbye cookies, have a good time dying. Here we go to get the cookies. We got to get them now. Look at them, how beautiful is that? So here are the cookies. Beautiful, beautiful. I never saw anything so beautiful. Okay, sugar cookies. They're very soft and strange right now, but they will soon turn into very excellent cookies. Perfect to go with lemon buttermilk sorbet. Hm. Let's make curry. Why don't we? Let's make curry. It'll be a party. So anyways, curry. Curry is basically cacovin, essentially. Um, the big thing about curry is the depth of the spice. I'm gonna tell you one thing. If you look on the back of a bag of curry, every single one of those ingredients is easily found. I highly recommend that once in your life that you make curry powder by grinding it with a thing, or even in a grinder, just so you can understand your ratios of things of how you like it. India has a, is a huge country with very different styles of cooking. We're going to make sort of a crowd pleaser curry, which is moderately hot in the sort of Northern style. What is curry powder? 
Well, there's essentially, this is extremely reductionist, two kinds, really, there's hundreds, but garam masala and curry powder. The difference is this has turmeric in it, which you can clearly see. It's orange, right? The other history is a little more interesting, which is that this is sort of colonial, meaning British, and this is a teeny bit more authentic, which is also reductionist, but this is, this has cinnamon, so does this, but it's different ratios and different flavors. But the big difference is this has turmeric, and it's a little sweeter, and this is a little bitter and does not have turmeric. There are hundreds of other differences. When you get green curry or red curry, that's a different part of Asia. Um, they, well, I mean, they have, they have those in India also, but it's, if you're buying it from a restaurant, it's usually Thai or um, Cambodian or something like that. When we say Asian, you have to remember we're talking about a massive, massive area of the world with thousands of different cooking styles. So think about that when you're learning Asian food. But today we're just gonna be making a crowd pleaser curry using both garam masala, more authentic, and curry powder, a little bit colonial. I would suggest that you make this the day before. You don't have to, but for some reason that only nature knows, braised food, tastes a little better the next day. Nobody knows why. It's uh, quite simple. However, it does have a few ingredients. We're making chicken curry. Now I'm using um, chicken thighs, which are supposed to be bone in, but I didn't look at the thing. Try to get bone in because it gives more flavor. If you buy chicken breast, you must buy it on the bone and hack it into sections. Um, you can use a whole chicken to make this if you want, if you know how to butcher it down. And you need some curry spice, you need curry style mirepoix, which is gonna be onions, shallots, as they say in England, and uh, a little bit of carrots, but they're gonna dissolve, sort of. And try to get dark carrots if you can, like purple carrots, or, um, or don't use a lot of orange carrots because they are, they're orange. A little bit of ginger, tomatoes in a can, the same ones that you use for uh, tomato sauce that we made for the lasagna. Uh, these are peeled tomatoes. Don't get diced or pureed, and you're gonna use uh, tomato paste. Similar ingredients to caco vin, you might have noticed. So we're gonna make chicken thighs, as I said. The first thing you're gonna do, basically, is season your chicken. And you wanna think of this as almost it has a soul. So get some salt and pepper. So you wanna be liberal in more ways than one. But not too liberal, okay? I'm gonna pepper this. Kind of turn them upside down. So finally, the USDA has come out with the recommendation that Americans not to rinse their chicken, which is the dumbest thing you can do because it in fact spreads pathogen all over your kitchen if the chicken has a pathogen, which is unlikely if you're buying pastured chicken. But anyway, liberal, most of it's gonna fall off, but it, you know, it's just, it just makes it good, okay? I am now going to brown the meat outside where it doesn't make a mess. As with any braise, this is the only color your meat's gonna get. So you wanna make it have a nice color. You, you don't really need to do it, but it just, I don't know, it brings a weird depth of flavor. Before we do anything else, we have to send out a huge congratulations to Rita Sodi and Jody Williams for winning James Beard Best Restaurant for Via Carota. Yeah! Woo! Uh, unfortunately, their outrageous fame has made it practically impossible to go in there. I go at 10 o'clock when they open, or like 5, 10 before the cocktail rush. It is heaven on earth. So we're gonna peel some, some ginger. You wanna take off the skin. You can do this with a peeler too, but you wanna take off the skin. You may not have noticed that I, I have an eighth size sheet pan. It's for mise en place. I also have 
this thing called a J cloth because I watch MasterChef, Prof The Professionals UK, the best cooking show on television. So, Monica Galetti, I might be the only American with a J cloth in an eighth sheet pan. Uh, they're very handy and they also drain beautifully. A uh, little better than paper towels and they don't shred. Uh, eighth sh eighth uh, sheet pan, so convenient. You have your main ingredients on the quarter, seasonings, I mean, it's just, and then you can walk to the grill or it, it's, mise en place is important. I'm gonna grate some garlic and I'm actually going to put it in here with our, essentially with our mirepoix. This is onions and uh, shallots. The other mistake that people make is that they put raw spice in their food. This is raw, just like that's raw, okay? You have to toast off or cook off the spices. This is a very common error. If I stuck my finger in here, it would not taste like curry. It would taste like a very intense, bitter spice mix. So you know how you toast off um, nuts and stuff like that? It's the same thing. This you can add um, more of later. You have to toast, cook it off, but this you, if you want more gingery taste, you can add it. Ginger is almost like a, like a citrus hot. Taste things, you know what I mean? Experiment. If you don't like it, throw it out, as my dad would say whenever he gave me a present. And Paul always goes, it cost a fortune. <laughs> They're not dissimilar actually, Paul and daddy. Okay. A little bit of ginger. And now we're gonna start building the soul of our braise or curry. Without the soul, it's beef stew. With the soul, it's beef bourguignon. It has a, a, like a soul to it. I don't know how to describe it. Depth of flavor is the fancy expression for it. But it's, um, you create that. And it doesn't happen in 30 minutes which is why it always blows my mind when people do cock -o van or something in these cooking challenges. I'm like, what are you nuts? It doesn't work in a pressure cooker. Newsflash, you can't make it in a pressure cooker or an instant pot. The first thing we're gonna do is hot pan, olive oil. That's right. My olive oil, just a covering the bottom. And we're gonna fry off a little bit of our spice, which we're gonna add fry off more later. Oh, we want to make a bed for our mirepoix. How much spice do you put in? Listen, man, I can't tell you. I don't know. I'm going to start by frying this off. People are going to have differing opinions of how to make curry, which is fine. Now, I've, I have ground my own. It's worth doing. If you can't find the good stuff, it's sometimes better. We're just going to kind of toast this until it, the fragrance comes out of the pan. And honestly, this goes for any spice that you're using. You don't use raw spice. It's already, can you smell that high town? It's already more fragrant, but it, it needs a few seconds here. Oh God, that smells good. Oh, like my dog. Look at, he's so sweet. Look, he got too hot in the sun. Do you need a rest? Yes. I'm gonna put in a little more olive oil. It's sm smoking now, which is good and we're gonna put in our mirepoix. And they're gonna get sort of a coating of this as they cook. They're gonna release their liquid a little bit. I bought some palm sugar, look at this stuff. I'm a little scared to use this. It's not really in uh, this curry at all, but it's interesting stuff. It's like rock hard. I'm excited to use it, I haven't used it. Any, any suggestions, please send them in. So we're gonna just fry these off for a little bit. I don't wear them because it's so pretentious. You know a chef's coat is like the most purpose-driven garment on the planet. When nobody's here and I have a day or two of cooking like pre-Thanksgiving, I'll wear one because it, they work. It, it, it's just a great garment for cooking in, but it's so pretentious for a home cook to wear that, I think. I'm gonna add a little seasoning now. And now I'm gonna sort of, I'm gonna throw in a little wine. This is white, you can use rosé. And we're gonna start to really make some good stuff here. Okay, I'm gonna put my carrots in. Awesome! A little more wine. Now we got a little simmer going. 
I'm gonna add some tomato paste. One can for now. Mix that in. Oh, it's starting to look like curry. Now, when it's like this, pasty and yummy like that, you're gonna put your chicken in. You wanna kind of nestle it, even though it's gonna move when you put the loose tomatoes in. You could do it like that, but it needs more liquid. So I'm gonna put in one can for now of tomatoes. Wow, these are very, very thick canned tomatoes. Can Ashton go to Mr. Lee and buy a container of chicken stock? I forgot to buy that. Goodbye. Yeah. The other thing you wanna do is keep an extra tomato paste because if it gets too thin, it's the, really the simplest way to thicken it. We're gonna fill this up a little bit with chicken stock and then we're gonna simmer it until those pieces of meat just fall apart. And fun accompaniments that are sort of cute are chopped peanuts, little tiny pieces of coconut, sorry Reggie, um, different kinds of chili, and people sprinkle, you know, you sprinkle it over, chopped parsley, chopped cilantro to sprinkle over the top. They're cute if you have little dishes, it's nice to serve those, you know. Uh, and then there's raita, which is plain yogurt with a little bit of uh, cucumber and mint, but there's a liquidy thing in there, lemon juice. And that's a lovely cooling sort of yumminess that you eat with curry. I love curry. When Ashton comes back, what we're gonna do is bring this up to a boil and then take it down to a simmer, to a braise. Now, what is that? We've discussed this before. We're not boiling chicken in curry and we're not letting it sit in lukewarm water. What you wanna see is, you can quote me on that. This is one of Paul's favorite things. And if you asked Paul, it would usually be curry. I say, what do you want, curry? I want to talk about Town & Country Magazine. What the hell kind of magazine is that? For instance, I bought it because I'm, I'm obsessed with the historic houses. I don't know who this is for, except the grossest part of the richest people in America, or pretenders, I don't know. But it's, if I could give you one, one article title. Where's Mommy? A Summer Camp Guide to Plastic Surgery. The most toxic name in philanthropy. College giving after the scandal. Not the scandal, but college giving after the scandal. I read the article. Do you know what it was about? It was about how to give favors to your college and not get your kid in trouble. That's what the article was about. Not to mention, uh, this, the most toxic name in philanthropy, which is those people who sold the Oxycontin. But uh, that magazine is, I'm sorry, man, you can come for me if you want. That's got problems. I'm still wearing it. Thank you. I'm now going to add chicken stock brought by the wonderful Ashton to about that level. And you can always add more. And now we're gonna bring this up to a boil, a boil. It's the only time it's gonna boil. All right, I'm happy with that boil. The chicken is already falling apart slightly, which is amazing. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna almost cover it. And I'm gonna take it down to low. And that's so I can sort of keep an eye on it and it doesn't get too um, crazy, you know, like too boiling or too flat. And then you leave that for about two and a half, three hours. And then if you're serving it the next day, you take it out, wait till it comes to room temperature, and then you can refrigerate it and just heat it up. That's how you make curry, sort of in a hurry. Now we're going to make a delicious accompaniment for curry. Now, usually this would be served with those beautiful breads that you get in an Indian restaurant, like naan, puri, which is my favorite, which is the one that looks like a balloon. I like it just on the side of the curry and I will eat it in plain rice the next day, just curry, just rice and uh, chutney. So let's make chutney from the beginning. Now we did make a chutney 40,000 years ago when we made the pork dinner and that had accompaniments that were good for pork and it was very sort of um, fall-like and it had dried, I think it had plums or dried figs or whatever. This is more suited for curry 
and contains mango. I'm just checking our dishes here quickly. Oh, this is, that's just wrong. So I'm, I'm serving that sort of fragrant rice that we made with the soy braised uh, short ribs. It's just a fluffier rice with a little star anise and cumin and you know, stuff like that. I went to see heavyweight boxing at Barclays Center. I had amazing seats. I sort of bought the seats because of this, in a way because of just this really 10 week thing with my dog. I was like, I'm just gonna buy these tickets. And it was fabulous. We saw Deontay Wilder knock out Dominic Brazil in two minutes and 17 seconds. A lot, a lot of money went swirling out that exit, but it was such a fun night. I had such a blast with John and Coop and Michael. We just had an incredible experience and they were total gentlemen the entire night. It was awesome. 50% of the people were black tie, not just dressed up. I mean, like the women were in gowns, sparkling gowns. It was amazing. And we, we, we their boys wore suits. They looked, I mean, it was amazing. We had, well, the idea was to go like Jack and Angelica to the Ali fight in the, at the garden. Everybody's like super chic, amazing. So anyways, I'm just gonna chop this. Um, these are shallots, <laughs> big ones I'm cutting in half. You guys know all this because you're dinner partiers. I'm putting a lot of onion. David Zephyrin, my lighting designer, the great genius of Axis, who used to light boxing, but now he does other work, lit that fight. So if I had known that David Zephyrin was at Barclays, chances are pretty high that I could have gotten a laminate. Can you believe that? I could have gone backstage with Zephyrin. Let's start that up. So what are we gonna do with this, Lynn? Lynn was drinking water. Should we try again? <laughs> what are we gonna do with this, Lynn? Hot pan olive oil. There you go. Oh, it's nice and hot. Little olive oil in the bottom. See, it's already sheeting, really. Oh, did you guys know about my eighth size sheet trays? Oops, it didn't make a sizzle. Oh, that's too bad. It was less hot than I thought. Okay, we're gonna cook those down. And while we're doing that, we're going to peel these mangoes and this apfel. So you're gonna cut it all the way around like this. Yes, it's scary. And then you're just gonna kinda get rid of the skin. It's not that easy. Now these are small. So how do you tell if a mango is ripe? It's soft and it has more yellow than green. And it's soft to the touch. And if you smell the bottom of it, you can smell mango. Mango is not my favorite fruit. My favorite fruit, tropical fruit, is a papaya. I'm using so totally the wrong tool. I should be using a little tiny paring knife. So too late, I ruined them all, but it's okay. Okay, we have like this much mango. I have three mangoes, but that's okay. I'm gonna just flip this. You don't want this to brown. Ooh, this is heavy. You don't want this to brown. You want it to be sweated, but not brown. I'm now gonna peel this apple with my new peeler. This is a good peeler. Like we said on Kitchen Gadgets, don't spend money on expensive peelers. So this is gonna add a little crunchy body. Chutney, I don't know, it's, like, it's kinda like a gas streak, I guess. But it goes with um, a lot of things, depending on how you season it and what fruits you use. I'm juicing some limes. I'm, I'm calming that down with a little wine. In goes our fruit. Some mango, <laughs> some apfus, some lime juice, some ginger. Don't be afraid to try these things. Even if that's all you make. Like you say, I got really good curry from someplace near you. And then I made the chutney. Oh, I have a cool ingredient. I can add to this. Ooh, this is gonna be good. Go to King Arthur Flower and buy this. You will not regret it. It's tart cherry juice. It's basically sour concentrated cherries. I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Look at the color. It's a cool ingredient. So I'm gonna stir this around. I'm going to pour in a lot of vinegar, the gas in the treak, <laughs> bum, 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 na, 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 na. Turn it up a little bit so you can get some heat going here. 
Now, if I just left it like this, it would be inedible, but not if I do this. Sugar. So this is gonna be what thickens your chutney. Don't be shy. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow mustard seed in. Put some fenugreek seed, black mustard seed. Oh, it's beginning to look a little bit like chutney. I'm gonna put one of these in, but you can't serve it with this because it's inedible. This is a star anise. I'm gonna put a little bit of this stuff. It's called Vaduvan. This is a French colonial inspired curry seasoning, really. It doesn't need to be toasted because it's almost like a salt, really. Vaduvan is fabulous. Don't worry about those big lumpy uh, apples. They will disappear. I'm gonna taste it. Wow, it's really good. Uh, you want this to reduce. So when you're reducing, don't be shy. One time we were cooking in here and Paul put uh, Tabasco sauce, oh my God. He, we were wilting spinach and he put Tabasco in and it turned basically into like pepper spray in the room. And there were his parents, you know, it was like older people here. And it was like in a completely toxic environment. You couldn't breathe. You couldn't go like this because it, it was like a mace, you know, in the air. It was funny. I would make this the night before the night before, after work so that you have it in the fridge. And all you're basically doing then is making rice for them and cutting some wedges of iceberg. So I'm gonna let those cook down a little bit. I'm actually cutting these in the chutney because uh, I didn't like the way they looked. Throw me a lime. Thank you. Limes. Oh, they're almost like fake tasting, you know? They're so, the perfume is so beautiful. You can put any kind of fruit in here you want. In the pork dinner one, we put in a lot of dried fruit, apricots, prune, uh, prunes, things like that, figs. This is a little more tropical. I mean, in theory, you could put pineapple in here. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at the bubbles. I'm seeing, so those are moving pretty fast. So I'm gonna wait until the bubbles are more loath to pop. And also how long it holds a, a line when I draw the line through it. You know, there's scientific ways to do it called softball and hardball, So the actress to the bishop. But um, I don't do that, where you drop it in a glass of water. You know all that stuff, Reggie? It's ridiculous. It's for like candy makers. Remember, it's gonna be much firmer when it's cool. Here's the golden rule. You don't want it to be the consistency that you want in the pot, because then it will turn into a block of completely overreduced cement. You can always continue reducing it if you're not happy. See that big bubble? It took a long time to break. Look at that, that's it, we're done. Off the heat. You know, my mother couldn't, didn't cook, didn't cook, but she could make really, really good lamb chops and really good fry ups, they call them in England, right? Like uh, breakfast for dinners, you know, like eggs, bacon, French toast. She would say she hated it, but she, was, she cooked a mean lamb chop. And that ain't easy, by the way. This is my new hat. It's called Boss of the Plains. I got it at the only hat shop in the world, the hat shop on Thompson Street, run by Linda, my hat maven. So Linda, thank you for my gorgeous Boss of the Plains. Iceberg lettuce. It went through a bad period where everybody hated it because it didn't have any nutritional value. Iceberg lettuce is a delicious light side. And the cutest and funniest way to serve it is this really old fashioned way, which is the iceberg wedge. Now, David and I have been doing this. David's a really good cook. He suggested this one night and I thought it was the cutest idea. Iceberg wedge with blue cheese dressing. Hilarious. You wanna know how simple it is? Peel off quite a bit of the iceberg until it's very light green and has no nutritional value. Then you're gonna do this. You're gonna find the big seam you're gonna cut down that seam, okay? Then you're gonna cut this in, in a wedge like that, and then you're gonna cut off the stem. Iceberg wedge. Pow! This is how quickly you can make salad, which is um, awesome when you have a ton of guests. You, you gotta get into the nostalgia of this. It's like the Ritz cracker canapes. I would serve this with your, the curry at the same time. It's not an appetizer. And then it's their choice if they want it or not. It's a, sort of like a nice foil. We're gonna make French dressing. 
You're gonna be really surprised about this. What is French dressing? You want me to tell it to you straight? It's a vinaigrette with ketchup in it, period. Literally make a vinaigrette. Two parts oil to one part vinagre. A little bit of salt, un peu de poivre, a little bit of pepper. Basically, instead of when you put the mustard in to a vinaigrette, you don't put mustard, you put ketchup. I'm eyeballing it. I have no idea how much goes in. Oh, hmm, look familiar. And it needs a little more vinegar. It's French dressing. Essentially dress that right before your guests uh, are gonna eat it so it doesn't get soggy. You can put a wet paper towel over this if you feel like cutting it two hours or so before they get there. Uh, and it'll keep just fine in the, in the refrigerator. And then right before you serve it, you just do a little drizzle and leave this out in case they're French dressing freaks and they want more. Wow, this is really good French dressing. I made it, come on. And also the um, ketchup emulsifies it a little bit. I have one question for the science world. I buy those chopped salads in the bags, okay? How do they keep the salad dressing emulsified in that bag? Why doesn't it separate? Iceberg wedge with French dressing. Yum. America, my home. Joe! Come on, Joe. Come on in and say hi to your fans. Joe Rome, my dog walker. Yay! Hello. He's a featured guest on Dinner Party Tonight. Um, Leonard had a small relapse this morning, Aww. but he's doing very well. I thought this was the recovery episode. I know, I know. But he looks pretty good now. He's going to be very stubborn on the way out and very swift on the way home, Joe. Can we Joe. take the cone off? Uh, yes, you may walk him without the cone. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Bye. Bye. The thing you want to keep in mind is your salad. So the salad should be cold because the hurry, the curry, the curry is, um, it is summery in a weird way, but it's, you know, it's a meal. So you need sort of cool salad and raita and cool things and rice and stuff like that. Um, so I would bring out your salad with your homemade French dressing at service. So they're here, they're drinking. You have maybe some, if you want to serve an appetizer, I would go look at our other episodes. Things that would be perfect for this would be edamame, perfect. Pickled shrimp, which we got a lot of people complaining about that it's not really pickled shrimp. And you know what? You're totally right. It's pickled shrimp that you want to serve that immediately. It's not a traditional recipe. You guys are completely right. It's, it's pickled shrimp is essentially shrimp ceviche, which is not what I made, which I accept. That would be a good appetizer. Um, the little lobster cups that we made or shrimp cocktail, but you want to keep it pretty light. So those are some suggestions for appetizers. After they've had a few drinks, they've, you know, they've had a beer or whatever. For instance, Kingfisher lager, it's a very excellent beer goes well with Indian food. I love Kingfisher beer. You can't find it over here, or I haven't been able to find it. Uh, after they've had a few drinks, everybody's relaxed, you're ready to go. Your curry that you made the night before is just heating. Uh, your chutney that you made either that morning or the night before or the night before the night before is cool, cold really. Your rice is cooked. You're ready to serve. You say, hey guys, we're gonna serve. And you put out your trays. Then you take your wedges out of the refrigerator dress them lightly, and leave the dressing for people who want more dressing. And frankly, after that, if they complain over their lemon buttermilk sorbet with sugar cookies, you should probably get rid of those friends. We made a gorgeous curry dinner for you and your friends. I mean, it's a huge pot. We do have a fairly large crew, but we made a lot. This is something that you can eat certainly three nights. You're not going to want to eat curry for six nights. So when you make it, don't eat, don't make enough that it's an insane amount of curry and nobody wants curry for a year. But it's really delicious and it's something that you can serve and your friends will adore it. So one thing that you may, you'll may you notice, I don't know if you can see that, but it became silken. And that's simply from the act of sitting in itself. Like, it's, like, I, like I say, it's like if you make chicken and you put it in a stew and you cook it and it goes, I'm chicken and stuff. And then if you make a braise, it goes, I'm chicken and stuff. See how the meat is shredded? It's falling apart. 
those huge pieces of meat that we had, geez Louise. So give them a little bit of rice. Don't serve the star anise to anybody, okay? You wanna give them a nice piece of meat and I would just lay it alongside like this. Did I ever tell you guys about that curry I had on the, the plane going to England with Madeline? Holy cow! I ordered the vegetarian meal for the hell of it and they, they brought me this insane curry that was not only the best vegetarian meal I've ever had on a plane, but it was one of the best curries I've ever had in my life. And I'm not kidding. To the point where I spoke to somebody on the plane and said, you gotta tell whoever's doing this for you that this is out of this world. Um, you could serve this on a separate plate if you'd like. This is your iceberg wedge with your French dressing. And then you have your beautiful chutney that they can add to their plate. Some people might fall in love with you. It's possible. This is a possible fall in love dish. Today we made a beautiful chicken curry with deep, deep sole, chicken thighs, onions, beautiful spices, simmered for hours, accompanied by a beautiful mango, apple, and cherry chutney, a sort of piquant condiment. We made iceberg wedge lettuce with homemade French dressing, which is hilarious, of course. And then for dessert, a super fresh lemon buttermilk sorbet, absolutely delicious, with sugar cookies sliced from the icebox. What a dinner, what a night. Wow, that's a nice combo. And perfect, perfectly cooling after the curry. Listen, summer's coming. Honestly, the easiest time to cook. You can coast from here to September 30th. All you gotta do is have salt and pepper. So this can be your last like, you know, complicated braise until we have to start doing complicated things again in the kitchen because the produce is waning. I just wanna thank you guys so much for watching Dinner Party tonight and for all your beautiful comments and questions and everything that you guys do to make our hearts fill with joy. Oh, it's starting to look like curry.